hearing. Welcome to the Aperio Teaching and Learning Conference. Um, I see a few people are still joining in. Uh, this is Neil Caden and uh, from the Aperio Foundation Sakai Community Coordinator. Uh, my co-facilitators are not able to make the call today. I guess they got some stuff going on um, locally. And so we will go through the agenda as usual. Uh, first thing I want to mention is for project updates and announcements is um, there's an analytics uh, call. I pasted the uh, link in to the Etherpad. Um, they're discussing kind of, I guess they're kind of restarting how they're uh, managing the, uh, the learning analytics group. And so that might be an interesting uh, conversation to be part of. I would be very interested myself in, in joining, but we have the teach the um, Sakai 11 QA, which happens Thursdays uh, around that time. So I'm not sure I'll be able to make it, but wanted to make sure uh, everybody knew about that because um, that sounds sounds pretty interesting. And I think analytics is something that can be, you know, a very powerful topic for Sakai and for for uh, on its own as well. <clears throat> um, Obviously, uh, we won't get an update uh, as for project update on Sakai 11 help documentation since that's what this meeting is. So we'll get plenty of time for that update. Uh, in terms of other updates, I'm not sure. Does anyone have uh, other project updates? No, no takers? Okay. Well, I'll give a brief update on Sakai 11. I'm still waiting to hear back from the um, the PMC, but uh, it, Sakai 11, it looks like we're probably going to release a beta release of Sakai 11 next week. Uh, and the idea of a beta is we're feature complete um, and we're getting close to an R a release candidate, but we're not quite there because we still have too many blocker and critical bugs that needs to be addressed. Um, so developers are working hard on those. Uh, I'm, uh, and I would kind of have a proposed schedule out there. I'm not confident we'll get an RCO one out before the conference. If we don't, it seems like more likely we'd get one out just after the conference, uh, the Open Aperio conference. Um, and then, uh, like I said, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Um, so any questions on that or comments? Okay. Let me think if there's any other updates. Well. Uh, dates the conference? Well, the, the, it's the Open Imperio Conference, right? So it is, um, I'll paste in the link to that. It's uh, May 22nd, I believe, is the first day of the conference. Um, all of us can go, sure, I understand. I'll paste that in. Uh, the conference is May 22nd through 25th where the 27th or, uh, 22nd is Sunday pre-conference workshops. Monday, May 23rd is Open Summit. I'll paste in that link because that might be something new to folks. That is pretty new. That's new for this year. Um, that's kind of an interesting concept. It's an open conversation for education. So it's uh, co-hosted by Aperio, but it's not solely an Aperio event. That in there. Also on the Etherpad. And then there's some post-conference meetings happening uh, after, uh, on Thursday, uh, May 26th. Let me see, are there any other, any other updates? I'm just trying to think about other areas. Uh, also, the other thing that I mentioned about Sakai 11 is that likely the, del the dashboard tool will be stealthed um, when the core team has reviewed it. Uh, it just seems like there's likely to be a lot of problems with it. There's currently about a half a dozen blockers, but they think there may even be more if we got into it more deeply. Um, so I think that they want to take time to do it right um, and not release it prematurely. So probably, so we're still going to have Morpheus. A lot of huge amazing work on Morpheus was done and Gradebook NG and Leap and Step and all those other things that, that we said we were going to include, They're all, they'll all be there. But um, Dashboard looks like it needs, it needs more work. So. Um, I'm expecting that will still be in Sakai 11, but as a stealth tool, meaning you can turn it on selectively uh, if you want to try it out or pilot it for your institution. Um, I think anything else? Um, some really good stuff going on with marketing, the Mar Sakai 11 marketing effort. Um, so that's pretty exciting. We'll have a really pretty Sakai 11 uh, web page. <clears throat> Um, and that should be done in time for the conference, so that's looking very promising. 
Um, and also the farm, Aperio Farm Funding and Resource Management Group is making really good progress on their website, our website, and uh, we're going to have a presentation also, and I'm sure we'll do some follow-up so people who can't make open Aperio can also see what we've done, so I'm sure that's a thing we should probably schedule. And the, for those of you who don't remember FARM, the Funding and Resource Management idea is um, to find like a, it was inspired by the crowdsourcing model of um, getting projects off the ground from idea generation to fundraising and or finding uh, additional schools to help with um, with you know contributing people resources uh, things like that so that's kind of an exciting uh, exciting thing we're still working on I think that's mostly the updates I've got any other updates okay. um, <coughs> excuse me uh, let me think. Uh, sorry, I guess I'm a little tired. Uh, oh, yes, Jira of the Week. Uh, did anyone have a Jira of the Week that they wanted to contribute? I have a filter I will paste in here. Um, and I was looking at them. There are several. If you want, I can just choose one. Uh, I'll take a quick look here. Of course, you have to go to Jira for that. Maybe I can share my screen. Yeah, I can. Uh, my sh screen sharing is not available. Okay, because Wilma has that for her presentation. So let me go ahead and um, I'll just pick one. Let me just read a couple of them and see if I, I can just made them. you presenter, Neil. What's that? Oh, I just okay. yeah, because I don't need it actually. I, I decided to do slides instead of screen share. Okay. Cool. Thanks. I thought maybe we could just take a brief look at a few titles. Uh, of the JIRAs and see if any of the titles sort of um, sound intriguing to folks. So let me see here, issue navigation. Um, there's a TL label on, the, what this means is somebody put a, a teach TL label or teaching and learning label on these. So there's built-in RWiki search not working when search tool enabled. And I think there's discussion about what to do with since RWiki well, is is supported for Sakai 11, but is likely to be deprecated in a future release. Um, so then the question is how much effort for the community to put into that search. Uh, there's allow instructor to release comments on the overall assessment. This is for tests and quizzes without releasing the questions. Um, marking source for web content tool as required during worksite setup. I'm not sure what that means, but I do know what the web content tool is. I think you all know. Um, Assignment UI, always show all, option, all options, um, add schedule content review with description on how to enable, to update to assignment UI proposed there. It's a feature request, it looks like. That's that little blue pluses, or green plus. Sam 2727 is your favorite? Okay. Well, we have a vote for 2777. Let's just look at one or two more, and if that's the vote, then we'll go there unless other people have uh, additional uh, ideas. So let's see, receive a warning message when clicking the late accept date radio button and don't enter a late accept date. Oh yeah, I actually like that one because that, that's, uh, I think I know what that one is. Um, identify students that need to be graded in the assignments list by student view. Um, Re-implement membership synchronization as an administrator triggered operation. Uh, so those are a few. There's, as you can see, there's a whole bunch here, 28. I think, you know, feel free to peruse those on your own time to see if there's ones you want to bring up for a future meeting. Um, probably all of them will be some interest. Are there any, does anyone second Terry's uh, favorite to review 2720, same ago 2727? Or have a different um, one they want to look at? Well, then I, I guess if uh, go in once, go in twice. Okay, so we'll go to 2727 as the Jira of the Week. I'll get that pasted into the chat. It's easy for you all to click and link there. Okay, feature requests. Settings in Samago require that assessment questions be released in order for the student to see greater comments at the assessment level. This would be a general comment over the whole assessment rather than question level feedback. Requiring the re release of questions uh, creates an issue with assessment security, allowing unauthorized distribution of test questions for new iterations. 
of the course. Instead, the option to release the questions could be made a button on the list of options. And then there's an attachment here. Um, I'm guessing that's the actual screenshot, the feedback on submission, but uh, not necessarily a mock-up of the proposed, uh, the proposed way of doing things, right? Yeah, well, Neil, this is Terry. Um, that's my favorite because I started it. Um, okay. The idea is that I had a, a teacher who uses this assessment in different semesters. And when she released the feedback to the students, they automatically saw the questions. And it was overall feedback. Doing that um, creates a problem with the test security going forward because a student reading their feedback can obviously print off the test and sell it or whatever. So we need to be able to see the feedback, but we don't necessarily need to be able to to have to release the questions. And so, yes, this is this is a screenshot of the buttons that are available. And we just need a way to release the feedback without releasing the questions. Can you talk a little bit about the timing of releasing the feedback? When does that usually happen for your instructor or instructors? It generally happens on submission, like it's clicked here. Um, okay. yeah, you can do it immediate. I mean, the, the feedback delivery buttons are there. Um, whether it's immediate when they answer the question or when they click submit. But when they get it back on submission, they get the whole tamale, you know, everything is there, the whole test and the right answers and the, everything. Right, Dave, I'm proposing we have an option to just release the comments. Is the current workaround that that um, they don't use the feedback on submission option, but kind of wait on that until they complete the grading? Is that the normal? More often, the students don't get feedback, and I don't think that's a good option at all, because the students need that feedback. Uh, a lot of times, they just skip that whole step. And uh, if, if, if they were, there might be an issue because yeah. students may have an issue not recognizing the context of the comments if they don't see the question. Then the, the teacher may need to be able to say regarding such and such, you were off base on this and that or whatever. Um, but, but having the test out there just absolutely invalidates the test for future courses. So is this graders comments is that that's not currently there is that the one that you're proposing on the screen or um well that's the, that's what's there and when you oh, okay. click the there. graders comments the the test questions come up okay i got you you have this is the feedback that the teacher provides the individual student. It's not the right. feedback that's automated into the assessment itself. Right. Okay. And is, I'm curious about the timing because um, why is it important that the student get that feedback from the instructor so soon versus waiting for the, because it's fresh on their mind? Is that the idea? Uh, you're really breaking up, but I think what you're asking me um, is a, a and with the timing and that kind of thing that the teacher or the instructor here was in the process of grading and reflecting back that might not have been just you know all multiple choice questions but some short answer and that kind of thing and in the process of grading she was making comments to the student about their response to the test um, and then making an overall comment you know, your grade is a B minus, you need to concentrate on learning this and that or whatever. So um, it's it's in the grading process that the teacher is making those comments. Um, so Dave writes, could we, could we have an overall um, assessment comments area like what exists in assignments? I think there is an overall area in the grading process. That's kind of where she was in. It's not always a comment level or a question level thing. Um, it's it it was mostly an overall comment, but 
it's just, you know, you're kissing that test goodbye when you release it that way. So Terry, do you have any requests uh, for feedback from, from the group? I'm not hearing you very well, Neil. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, that's not good. Um, how's that? Is that better? Marginally. Marginally better? Hmm. Okay. Well, maybe it's, maybe it's me or something, but... Um, Okay. Um, I was gonna. I was asking. Do you? What do you want to ask of the group? Like, what kinds of feedback would you like? Just general feedback on the Jira, votes for the Jira, alternative ideas. Like, what kinds of feedback would be helpful on this one? It. It would be. It. It would. Oh. You there? Yeah, um, I'm getting a reconnecting kind of message. Um, I don't know who it's reconnecting, or and I'm getting grayed out. Uh. Terry, you still there? I oh, know. I think we lost Terry. Oh, Terry. Yeah, I guess that's really the question. Does anyone else have comments in the JIRA? I was making some suggestions, and Dave, I think that's really on target with what I was thinking is kind of use case scenarios and, you know, because I think if you start thinking about what the use cases are and the timing issues, like when do you need certain types of feedback and, and you know, or other types of feedback, you know, what's the harm in waiting? I think sometimes the feedback, it might make sense to wait, but it depends. It may also depend upon, I'm thinking like the, uh, way you configure the test setting. So if you were having a test setting that had an unlimited number of um, of uh, submissions versus one that had one submission, I think you would you would think about this in a very different way, right? And you might have use cases for both, but they might be very different thought processes. So that's kind of what my thinking is, at least to stimulate some some discussion. So Dave writes, true. I often use unlimited submission option for lower level. Bloom's assessments, and Wilma writes, how about a new option, release overall greater comments only? And uh, Dave mentions that his uh, um, unlimited submission options is to knowledge towards mastery, right? And I guess, Wilma, the only question I heard come up was how do you keep the content? Oh, I, say, I guess if it's overall greater comments, then I guess uh, I guess the question is, I, I lost track of whether that's like the Question level, or is that overall for the whole for the whole quiz? Overall, it wouldn't be individual question people. Okay, overall, okay, and that's what David Dave is writing also. So that that makes a lot of sense to me. That would make it simple. Yeah, I mean, of course, I'm not a, I'm not teaching. I'm not on the front lines like you guys. But Terry, are you back yet? I am. Okay, yes. so we had a little little bit of discussion, mostly in the chat. Um, but if, so, if you look in the chat and scroll up, you'll probably see it. But the suggestion is to maybe have a release overall greater comments only that is at the assessment level, um, and uh, and you know, so it's more of a high level thing and not not the individual question feedback. Um. The it, delaying the feedback wouldn't really solve the problem uh, because the questions would still be released. I don't want to release the questions. Yeah, Terry, what, what I'm proposing is that maybe um, if you could pull up that screenshot again with the, the options, Neil. 
um, maybe add another radio button selection above, you know, release questions and the following that would say release overall greater comments only. Yeah. Um, and then you could choose that instead of the release questions and option. Right. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Hello, are you there? Yes. Okay. Well, I think we've gone a little over time. It looks like there was some additional chat. I, I got disconnected myself um, in my audio, so I missed it. But uh, would it be okay to wrap up? Because we're actually running a little over time. Yes, actually, and it improved your audio, whether it was your disconnect or mine. So I can hear you now. Okay. Well, I hope that's a good thing. Um, <laughs> so. Okay, cool. Well, thank, thanks, Terry, for bringing that one up. Um, okay. And I hope you got the feedback you were you were looking for. Well, I, you know, of course, ultimately the resolution, you know, to get that button on there is what I'm looking right. for. Right. Well, uh, uh, that's that's uh, another discussion. So, um, okay, let's go back to the agenda. And I think Wilma, sorry to get started a little bit late here, but I think we could still give you about thirty minutes, roughly. Um, I hope that'll be sufficient. Sure, I think that'll be fine. Um, so, um, I was asked to give an update on the Sakai 11 help documentation. So, I'm going to just kind of go through. I'll start off with um, sort of an overview of the authoring process. Um, I'm not sure if how many of you folks have, are familiar with it already or have been involved with it to some degree. So, I'll just do kind of a high-level overview. Um, what we started with Sakai 10 help was um, a new process for authoring the, the help content using a collaborative cloud-based system called Green Steps Live. Um, it's basically help authoring software that helps us work in a distributed team so that um, different people can contribute uh, from different locations, but the content is kind of all hosted on the web. Um, and then we have options for exporting that um, when we actually package it um, to be released. So um, just to kind of give you an idea, if you've not seen it already, you can actually go to this website. It's um, the uh, sakai.screenstepslive.com site. And this is included with ScreenSteps. Um, so it's actually part of the, um, the subscription to the service. Um, and it, it allows you to, to go online and preview the documentation there. This is the same content that is actually included in Sakai as um, the contextual help. So it's it's the same content, it's just a different way of, of viewing it. You can view it outside of Sakai completely um, via this website. So when you go there, you can actually view um, the different manuals that we have available. And uh, I, you can see I've just published the Sakai 11 manuals. Um, the Sakai 10 ones are on there as well, um, and also in the different uh, translations that we have available for 10. We don't have any translations for 11 yet. Uh, we will, um, but we have to get the English version done first, and then we can copy it over and get some of our translators involved. Um, but uh, you'll notice that we did make one change. Uh, we combined the instructor and student guide into one user guide. Uh, that was because there weren't a whole lot of um, differences between the help for those two roles. There were only a handful of articles that were actually really all that different. And um, when we originally broke them up into roles, we were anticipating that um, Sakai would be able to detect which role you had in that course and pre present you with the appropriate help. But in practice, it didn't quite work out that way. So um, it was just easier to combine those two manuals together into a user guide uh, for, for end users. And then we also have the administrator guide, which is separate because that's um, a pretty discrete set of uh, 
instructions and steps that a typical user wouldn't need to refer to all that often. So we left that one as its own guide. Um, so you can see those two that are available now, and we're still updating the, um, the user guide. Now if you go into a um, actual manual, you'll see over on the side all the different chapters. The chapters um, are broken up by tool, and then within each chapter you have articles that go over different, uh, you know, functions or, or tasks that people might be performing. So if you want to preview some of what's out there, again, feel free to go to that site and, um, and take a look. Now this is the editing interface for screen steps and um, this is something that you won't be able to see on the website. Um, the website is, is open for anybody to go and, and view, it's sort of view only. Um, but if, if you're part of the editing team, then you would have access to this other portion of screen steps that allows the actual editing to go on. So um, I thought I'd show you guys a screenshot of that just to kind of give you a flavor for what is involved on the back end in developing some of the help. Um, this is a picture of the desktop interface, which is what you typically use the most when you're actually authoring the content. Um, and it's got a library built in, which mirrors the one that's um, available on the, the Screen Steps site. Uh, but you can actually go in there and create additional chapters or, or manuals or articles. Um, and it's got a built-in, let me go to the next slide. This is uh, an individual article. It's got a built-in um, image editor. So it's kind of, if you're familiar with Snagit or, or Skitch or some of those other screen capture tools, it's got that kind of built into it so that you don't have to have a separate um, image tool and then you're importing that into something else. So it's all sort of in one package. It makes it nice and easy. And once you import the image, you also got some annotation tools where you can put boxes around things or number things, highlight things, you know. So it, it makes standardization of the annotations a lot easier. Um, there's also a place in this interface to tag articles with keywords uh, for search because the, um, the context-sensitive help in Sakai is searchable, so you can put in your keywords. Um, and this is also where we put in uh, the descriptors that tie it to a particular tool. So we put in the tool ID as, as one of the, um, the metadata fields, and that way it maps to the appropriate tool when you actually get it into um, Sakai. So, um, so that's kind of what the editing interface looks like a little bit. And you also see over here on the side, it's got some um, notes um, in the bottom left. You can actually see a history. You can revert to earlier versions and things like that. So it makes it nice and trackable. Um, you've also got an option to check in and out articles because, again, people are working in you know, remote locations. They might be working on different articles. You don't want to stomp on each other's changes. So when you're working on an article, you actually check it out and then make your updates and then when you check it back in you can flag it as you know whether or not it still needs an update whether it needs review whether it's approved um, you know you can have different owners so it, it manages the um, the workflow a little bit uh, that's what the the screen step software does for us if you're interested in some of our um, process guidelines and this got cut off a little bit when I uploaded the PowerPoint um, but that's basically just the the Confluence page uh, for the Sakai help docs if you just go to Confluence and search for online help it you should be able to find it um, it got cut off a little bit when it converted the PDF uh, or, or converted the PowerPoint slide but anyway um, we've got information there about um, screen steps, we've also got sort of our style guide that we try to follow as we create articles. So that's available there. And um, we've also got information about our meetings, which anybody is, is welcome to join, um, and minutes from past meetings. Uh, our next monthly meeting is actually coming up on Friday. So if anybody, uh, you know, is interested or wants to get involved with the help, you're certainly welcome to, uh, to join the call. Um, and that's going to be on Friday at 11. So once the editing um, of the content is complete, um, 
we actually export, or I usually do it, um, I export the content out of screen steps in HTML format. And then we take that HTML and package it with the Sakai release um, so that it becomes part of the, the actual Sakai tool for, um, for online help. So those files are put into a particular directory um, where it, it, it all goes into the core code. Um, now the exported files, we also make those available. Um, we upload both the HTML version and the screen steps exports of the, the entire help content manual. Um, also the PDF export of those manuals um, and put them on GitHub so that if you're interested in customizing the help locally for your institution, maybe you've rebranded Sakai as something else and you want to customize your own help, um, you do have that option. So um, those files are available on GitHub and it looks like my uh, GitHub web address got cut off when it converted the, the slide. So um, if anybody needs that web address, I can I can shoot it over to you. Just let me know. I can send it af after the call or I'll paste it into the chat after I'm done um, presenting. But, um, but basically, all of the files are available there for various versions. Um, the screen steps package files are in there if you happen to use screen steps. Um, there are a couple of institutions that have adopted screen steps for their own help so they could import the entire package and then modify it from there. Um, so that's one option. And we also have the, uh, the translated files. Once the translations are available, we make those available here. All right, so that's the overview of the process. Um, now to kind of give you guys an update on the Sakai 11 help and where that's, um, where the status is. And this is as of yesterday, so um, hot off the press here. All right, these are the, the current volunteer editors that we have that are working on the, the docs for 11. Um, these are in no particular order. Um, we have um, 10 accounts that we're able to use as part of the Aperio uh, license for screen steps. And uh, Neil is in there as an admin that takes up one account. And then we have one person who's doing some Chinese translation of, of the version 10 documents. So that uses up another account. So these are the remaining eight accounts um, for the folks who've uh, volunteered to help update some of those documents. So um, these are the folks working on um, updating all of that content for you. So thank you to everybody who's who's been involved. Your help's really uh, very much appreciated. All right, so these are the counts of the actual articles. Um, in the admin guide, there's 107 articles for the admin guide, and that is complete. That one has already been finished. Um, the user guide has 377 articles total. Um, 215 of those have been updated and 162 are still remaining. They still need to be updated from version 10. Now the updated ones are currently in, um, and it looks like it kind of messed up my, my uh, labels there at the bottom. The, um, the 215 that have been updated are in needs review status. What we do is we mark them as need re needs review when uh, the author of the article has finished authoring. Um, and then I go through at the end just to kind of get another pair of eyes on it and make sure that everything matches with our style guide for the overall project so that it, it's continuous from different authors. Um, so I have to go through on the back end once people check them all in um, to check for consistency. So I still have to give those a quick uh, you know, look, see when, as I go through, but um, we are more than half, well more than half done. Um, we're probably about three quarters of the way there. So um, definitely making good progress. This is our timeline um, and these release dates. I know Neil had mentioned um, some of the dates at the beginning of the, of the call. Um, so these again are also very uh, recent uh, dates that have been kind of shifted around. Um, it looks like there will be a beta release next week uh, around the 11th. Um, and then we're expecting that release candidate one will be released on or about June 3rd. 
and release candidate two about two weeks after that on June 17th. And if everything goes well with those releases, then we can expect um, the Sakai, you know, general availability of, of Sakai 11.0 around, you know, June 24th or late June. Um, so those are the tentative uh, target dates for those releases. Um, and I say tentative because things can always shift a little bit, um, but that's kind of what we have in mind right now. Uh, as far as the help documentation, it does have to be packaged with the release, so um, it, it kind of feeds into this whole um, release process. And um, obviously we're not going to make the beta release, which is next week, because we've still got 162 articles. Um, but uh, we do expect, or I expect, that they will be in the, the release candidate one, which is at the beginning of June. So we have about a month, um, and it, that should be enough time to get those additional articles um, reviewed and updated and uh, approved to be uh, exported for inclusion. We are a little behind schedule uh, in general based on this time uh, in the release cycle for version 10. And in version 10, that was we were writing everything from scratch. So um, you'd think that would take longer, right? But um, Sakai 11, has the release date has been a little bit of a moving target, as I'm sure a lot of you know who have been involved with um, some of the QA and other things. Because Morpheus uh, was such a huge change to the UI, um, that really uh, had an impact on a lot of the documentation work because there are certain areas that we just couldn't document until some of these Morpheus, Morpheus issues were resolved um, because otherwise either the workflow was a little bit different or the screenshots were totally wrong. Um, so we had to kind of wait and it was a lot of checking back to see if something had been corrected yet. Um, there were also a lot of last minute features that were added um, to tools like Lessons. It has seen a lot of, of new features for version 11. A lot of them were getting checked in up until just a few weeks ago. So, um, so those are, are still kind of very new um, and we haven't had a chance to actually go in and even finish QAing everything, um, much less documenting it all. Um, other changes to the UI, uh, such as like the naming and uh, icons used for my workspace slash home, that was only proposed uh, earlier this week. So, I mean, there's a lot of um, changes right up to the minute, which will affect certain areas of the help. So, um, so we've been kind of, uh, it's a lot of hurry up and wait, <laughs> but I think um, we're getting there. So, uh, Getting close, and now that a lot of the Morpheus work has been done, um, it's a lot easier to go back in and capture some of that in the help. So, are there any questions? Thanks, Dave. I appreciate that. And Didi, uh, for the, the thanks in the chat there. I'm going to paste the uh, GitHub address that got cut off, just so you guys have it. That's where the help files will be once, uh, once they're actually uploaded to GitHub. Um, one thing that I will note in the, um, the Screen Steps site is... And actually, let me get that web address as well, so you can click on it if you want to visit it. Um, there is a comment field. Um, if you go and view any of the articles and scroll down to the bottom, there's a comments area. So if you notice an error or um, something that uh, just looks like it's messed up and we missed it, <laughs> um, feel free to enter a comment there. And those comments come back to the editing team, so we actually know which articles might need a correction. If there's a, you know, a typo or, or steps that are incorrect, um, feel free to uh, to put in a comment there, so we know where to go back and fix it. Because it's a lot of articles to keep track of, so we do occasionally miss miss things. Um, so that would be very much appreciated, and. Uh, 
Let's see. I, I see a comment from Dave. So how can we best help or best to stay out of the way while you all work? Um, well, again, commenting on existing articles is always appreciated. Um, if you see an error, um, I would I would discourage people from commenting just to say, hey, nice article, just because <laughs> that's going to create a lot of additional emails and, you know, checking on things. Um, we appreciate the, the you know, uh, kudos, but, you know, probably don't need it on the individual articles, only if there's like an error or something that needs to be fixed. Um, one thing also to note on the Screen Steps Live site, um, although I've published uh, the um, manuals for 11, the admin and the user guide, I have not published um, some of the articles that still need updating. So what I did is I, I moved those into uh, draft mode so that they're only visible to the editing team until we get them updated. So if you go into some tools, you may see, like, for example, Lessons has no articles. Um, it does. It's not that it doesn't have any articles. It has a bunch of hidden articles that still need to be updated. So if you see things that appear to be missing at this point, um, don't worry about that. Um, they will uh, be available for viewing once once they've actually been um, updated to the current version. Now, once uh, we've completed all of our updates um, and everything is out there, if there's something that is missing, like a particular article that you think would be really helpful, um, that would be really great feedback. Because, um, again, we try to hit on, you know, the most common use cases that people would be doing in the particular tools, but there's always other permutations, other things people might be trying to do, little edge cases or, um, you know, so if you find that there's something that you would like to see an, a help article about and it doesn't appear to be there after you've done a little bit of searching, um, do let me know so that we can put that on our to-do list to, to add to the help um, you know, it is something that we add to continually, so uh, I imagine we'll be updating and, and adding additional articles for, you know, the, the dot one or dot two release, um, as well as, you know, all the updates that are going into the re initial release. So um, please let us know if there's things that aren't there that need to be. Any other questions? Or anybody who's been involved with the documentation that would like to comment? Wow, you guys are a quiet group today. <laughs> <laughs> Not a whole lot of comments. All right. Well, um, looks like we had plenty of time <laughs> to get through that portion, Neil. So no worries on going over. Um, let's see. I see a comment from uh, Fawe. Uh, Thanks for the hard work. How can I help with lessons tool in 11? Contact you. Uh, yes, you can email me if you um, have things that you would like to contribute. We do have a few folks who've already um, kind of taken on the lesson tool. They've sort of earmarked those articles to work on. Um, so I would probably put you in touch with those people because, again, we have a limited number of editor accounts. So if you have content, um, things that you've written up, you could send it to either me or one of the people that are working on it, and they can incorporate some of that content into um, the the Screen Steps site, uh, but unfortunately we don't have enough um, editing accounts to make everybody an editor, so uh, we have to kind of keep that somewhat limited. But there are quite a few changes, um, so if you have things that you've written up for your institution that you'd like to contribute, feel free to send them our way. Again, we may need to modify them slightly um, to match the style guide for um, the online help because we try to keep it fairly consistent. Um, but any of those types of contributions are certainly very welcome. Um, yeah, I see a comment from Adam 
can follow I use my username. Yes, Adam does have a um, an account as one of our editors. So if you wanted to share that username among the two of you, that's fine. I think Didi and, and uh, Louisa from Maris are going to do something similar. Yeah, we are. So, um, so yeah, if you guys want to share a single account, just um, be careful to check in articles after you've done any work. Because if you check them out on two different devices, it causes problems and you could lose uh, that version that you edited. So make sure you check everything back in. There is a way of having um, additional accounts, but it would be an additional cost. So we could upgrade our subscription level um, to allow for additional editors if needed. So if we had a lot of people who really wanted to help, I think that would be a, a reason to upgrade. Um, so, you know, the, but that would be up to Perio since they're the ones uh, footing the bill for that. <laughs> Dave wants to know how can we best push the use of the documentation. Um, I think just you know making sure that as you uh, work with the faculty, the end users at your institution, that you point them to the resources that are available. Um, you can actually use some of the Screen Steps content in your training if you wanted to. Um, we can export ex the PDF versions of things. So we could actually, um, there's a way, and I don't think we have it updated for 11 quite yet, um, but it's pretty easy to do once all the articles are uh, finished, is to, um, to upload the PDFs for each article. And that's an automated thing that you can do in, in Screen Steps. It uploads the PDFs for you. But that would give you a document that you could print off you know, a particular article if you plan to go over that task in a workshop or something. Um, it also gives, you know, end users a way to, to print things off easily if um, if they have something that they do a lot and they want to remember um, the steps. So um, yeah, I mean it's all uh, freely available so please feel free to repurpose it for your, your training and um, internal documentation needs. Okay, Neil is asking what about future ideas of integrating user documentation and QA? Um, I know that this time around, as I was going through and updating a lot of do the documents, um, it was it was actually uh, I wasn't following a QA test script, but it was sort of script-like in the sense that I had to walk through a series of steps to get the um, the document updated. So anytime I would bump up against a Morpheus issue or some sort of functional issue, um, those were opportunities to you know check to see if that had already been reported and if not, create a Jira. So I think that um, there is a way you know if if the editing team um, really commits to um, you know stopping what they're doing and you know filing a Jira when we run into those kinds of issues that that can really help to assist a lot of the QA efforts that are going on. But it does take some additional time, so um, definitely something to uh, to try to uh, encourage in the future. Any other comments, questions? Dave says something is the only way I can duplicate myself currently. Are you are you learning how to clone <laughs> people, Dave? Because okay, because <laughs> I'd love to be able to clone myself. That would be really useful. Thanks, Sherry. <laughs> There's only one Wilma. Okay, well, if there's no other questions, I can turn it back over to Neil, and um, we can use the remaining time to talk about future meetings.
Thanks, everybody. Neil, are you still there? Or did we lose your audio? I think you're muted. I see a wireless caller muted. No? Hello? Okay, now I, I, now I, I hear you. I did. Okay. All right. So I got muted. I have two ways to get muted, and so I, I just had to pick one of them, and I'm, I'm in trouble. So um, I, kept, I kept making comments and thinking you guys are just ignoring me. So... Well, that wasn't the case. Uh, yeah, we have 10 minutes. I think we don't have a, to um, a topic yet for our next meeting. Um, um, we still have a list of a wish list of things that we have here on the. Uh, obviously, we've done a documentation group update, so we don't need that anytime soon. Um, so, any ideas for uh, for topics for um, for future meetings? That's what we're looking for. And particularly, the idea would be, you know, it's great to come up with ideas, but it's even more helpful if you either want to present or to lead a discussion. Like, it doesn't have to be a presentation like this. It could be a, you know, a, a discussion um, about anything that's related to teaching and learning. That was interesting sound, sound effects. I think that was Adam's uh, window again. Yeah, sorry, motorbike. Yep. <laughs> okay. It wasn't, the, wasn't the police coming for me this time? Good to know. That's good. That's good to know. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So um, so any thoughts about things you guys want to talk about? I know everybody's so busy, and sometimes when you're very very busy, it's hard to step back and think about you know what you'd want to present um, or what you'd like to have discussions on. Um, we could certainly, we've talked about doing uh, one where we just go through the, there's a lot of, you know, um, issues labeled teaching and learning. You saw those 20 something issues. We could spend a whole meeting potentially going over as many as we can get through on that list. That could be a one use of time. Um, we also talked last time about ways to encourage um, the other Aperio projects to get involved and having a non-Sakai meeting. Um, I don't think we made, you know, much headway in terms of an act on that. Um, I was wondering whether could we do a kind of LTI tools special where a few people talk about tools they use in their institutions, uh, you know, which they think are really good and that'd be sure. um, high independent, wouldn't it? Yeah, it is somewhat. So do you have, uh, so uh, who volunteers to do an LTI? We can also put out a call, but just curious on this, on this phone call, if we can get a couple of people. Uh, two or three people to volunteer, we could also put out a call see if anyone else wants to do that. So who's, who's um, volunteering to, to be part of that? Well, we use Panopto, and someone's just done that one, haven't they? Um, and that is more or less the only LTI tool we use, so uh, can't volunteer. <laughs> I mean, maybe there's not that many people here, is there? Maybe. No, not really. Yeah, maybe people who aren't here would. We could volunteer them, couldn't we? People who aren't we could. here. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> that takes them a lesson. <laughs> so uh, I'm seeing some other suggestions. So what I'll do is I'll put out, you know, we can put these out on the list, maybe as a separate request. Um, but if anyone wants to volunteer, if we can get two or three people um, sharing their LTIs, at least, I think, institution, that would be. Uh, and that could involve a perio. I can send an email to the projects group as well. Yeah. Projects group is the different projects for a pair under a perio. Projects group. Uh, let's see. So there's um, uh, a lot of actually a lot of ideas are coming through. I see on the chat. I can't keep up quite. So let me let me scroll back here. Um, the forums tool. Um, yeah, I think that's going to that uh, going to happen at the conference of the Sakai Forms tool, but maybe there could be a follow-on after the conference. Is that is that the, talking about what New York are going to do or something? Because they were going to well, work. Well, it could on be. Forms, weren't they? 
Yeah, I think it makes sense to include what they're thinking of doing, right, as a community discussion. Yeah, yeah. no, that would be good. We get a lot of complaints about forums. Uh, be good. Maybe we could yeah. have something on farm uh, for the folks that aren't attending the conference. You know, yeah, we'll we follow up, you know, to the conference presentation. Right. Okay. Um, see some other things going well. What was online course development process? Is there interest in that? That sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. And maybe, I guess the idea, let's see, I went, like I said, chat's scrolling by, which is great, but it's hard to keep up here. Um, <laughs> okay, so Davey is, it could talk about his, but I think it would be, uh, that sounds like also a round table, a round table kind of thing as well, right? Um, so that'd be cool. Uh, if we got a couple of volunteers to talk about their course development process. Um, and David's saying yes, round table. All right. We need one or two more volunteers for that. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. There's some other discussion here. What did I miss? A bunch of stuff. Um, this custom LTI. Oops, that's not what they're behaving for me. Uh, LTI for atomic learning in EBSCO. Oh, okay. So that could be part of the LTI one, Jennifer. So you signing up for the uh, LTI one then? Oh, cool. Fawai, thanks for signing up for that. So we have at least two. Um, so that's awesome. So that's a go. Fawai. And Jennifer says she's on board for the LTI. So we could use one or two more there. Um, awesome. Let's see. Kai Forbes till probably after the conference. Farm presentation maybe after the conference also. Sorry about that little noise there. Um, okay, thanks, Mark. Thanks, Adam. Um, it is 11, and so I want to wrap up. Uh, any other ideas? And also, yeah, any other ideas? Did I cover all of them? The next TNL call is the third week in Wednesday. Or the third Wednesday, the third Wednesday of the month. So that would be, I believe, in two weeks, which is. That would be the 18th, right? The 18th of May. Yep. Cool. Well, thank you all. It was great because we actually got some suggestions and some volunteers for upcoming calls. We just have to get a few things scheduled. So um, thanks, everybody. Um, be looking for more emails and follow-up, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye for now. Stop the recording.